Hey, what's up guys? Foxone here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the radiator, um, take out and install the radiator on a 1997 Geo Metro four-cylinder sedan. This works with all Geos with the four-cylinder. Um, I'm pretty sure every year with this four-cylinder is interchangeable pretty much. So if you have the hatchback, the sedan doesn't matter as long as it has this engine. The three cylinder is very similar setup with the radiator, but this is the four cylinder. So I'll be showing you how to do that. I already have the radiator pulled out of this one, but I have a parts car I'm going to have to pull the radiator out to put in this one. So I'll show you guys how to do it. This one was in bad condition. It had like some sort of sediment in it, as you can see, and it had splits in it. That's where it was leaking. And these have a fan on them, electrically controlled, and they're very simple to take out. So. I recommend if you do not have any prior mechanical knowledge, get a Geo. They're very simple to work on in a good starter car. Great gas mileage and cheap to fix. Anyways, let's go to that parts car. All right, so what you will need to do this is a catch pan so you can safely dispose of the coolant, locking pliers, screwdriver, and 10 millimeter socket. So let's get started. And now we're at the parts geo. So very simple to take out the radiator. Two bolts here. Take this hose off. Take this hose off. And down there, there's one hose clamped on right here. Just want to unclamp that. Um, usually it has one of the uh, screwdriver, kind of like that, but you can screw it on and off. Just unscrew that or use a 10 millimeter socket to get that off. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Don't forget to disconnect your fan. So now I'm gonna take this radiator out. Just wanted to point out, radiator sits like this in the car. And the way to drain it before you unbolt everything is just right here. This just unscrews and you can go ahead and drain it. All right, so we disconnected this hose, took off the lid. I unscrewed the drain bolt and now we're disconnecting fluid. And if you even want to drain your coolant reservoir without having to take it out, you can take the hose that was connected up here and then just let gravity do the work. And as you can see, now it's draining out. Now we're under the car. As you can see, this is where it drained out of. And this is the clamp I was talking about. You can. I suggest getting the 10 millimeter and doing it because the screw usually just strips out. So I gotta do, after you loosen up there and take the hose off up there with uh, your locking pliers, uh, just take the, slide this one off after you get this loose and the radiator just simply rests on these two mounts. So after that, you just pull the radiator straight out. All right, so we got that bottom hose disconnected all the way and your radiator. Just comes straight out. Don't forget if you're storing something for a long time and um, it's gonna be left open, make sure to put something to block so no mice or bugs get in the engine. Mostly mice though, don't want that to happen. So just put like a rag or something so they can't get in. So I went ahead and put the good radiator in. I made sure to inspect the hoses as well to make sure none of them were cracked or leaked. Might as well because we're already putting a different radiator in. Put them all back on uh so these have to make or make sure to re remember to inspect these because these are rubber right here and they make it so the radiator is mounted properly make sure those are bolted on and coming underneath make sure these mounts are good as well the uh, like they're not rusted and the rubber also make sure your hose is on there good and inspect that as well So now all we have left to do is put some radiator and fluid in it and distilled water. We'll see if it runs. So depending on where you live and how cold it gets, you're gonna wanna do some sort of 50-50 mix with antifreeze and distilled water. I'm gonna put a little bit more antifreeze than distilled water in this just because of how cold it gets here. And I think part of the reason why this radiator even broke in the first place is because it didn't have enough coolant in it. So just go ahead and put that in there. 
and let it drain into the radiator. All right, so I got some fluid in there, but uh, it seems we might have an air pocket or something. So I'm gonna hook up the battery and see if this thing even starts up. And then uh, once it's running, we'll turn on the heater so we can let it flow through and just add fluid as it runs and lets it uh, vent. Of course, my phone didn't want to record, but I started it up and a bunch came out of the radiator. So I'm gonna try to start it up again. You guys can hear how done it sounds, but it does run. I mean, when you have that many miles, over 200,000, you're gonna sound a little rough. running uh with the radiator flu and everything and drove it to my friend's house and shortly after i did that i parked it and it never turned on again cranks but doesn't start i don't know what happened it was uh the temperature was staying at normal level got the radiator bled and everything but now it's just a crank and no start i don't know what it is i checked spark it was getting spark i uh, checked fuel is getting fuel uh haven't checked the timing yet but Timing belt seemed pretty good. I loosened this and looked at it and wasn't, didn't look like it skipped or anything. And it was the correct tightening. Uh, if anyone knows what could be wrong, I'm going to obviously delve into it some more. But put some starting fluid in it uh, just to see if it'd fire and nothing. So I don't know if it's just off time, weak spark or what. I also took off the distributor cap and cleaned the points Still no difference. Uh, it's fire. Actually, it fired like once or twice after I did that and then just crank, went back to cranking and no starting. Um, could be a coil. Not for sure. Haven't checked that yet. But I was still getting a pretty good amount of spark. So, till next time, I hope this video helped you with your radiator. Uh, I'm going to make another video about this, see why it's doing this, and I'll let you guys know. Till next time, see ya. So, here it is. Four cylinder spark plugs. Anyways, so I took the distributor, it just sits on like that, two bolts. Then this coil in the center, basically, right here, is to the coil pack, or just, yeah, coil. I haven't tested that yet. I'm going to, though. Uh, so here's what it looks like on the inside. Those four points on the outer edge were pretty corroded, so I got rid of the corrosion. There's the center piece, and then this is the thing. Uh, I don't know if that's burnt or not. It looks kind of dirty. There, now you can see it. So, I don't know if that needs a new one of those or what.